Welcome to the first video on Microsoft Windows 8 and particularly in this video Microsoft Surface. I've been working with Windows 8 for well over a year now and just recently picked up a Surface and basically I can now see that a touch device is, is something that's very important to really get a good sense for what they were trying to accomplish with Windows 8. A lot of the functions and a lot of the pizzazz um, that you'll see is going to be on the touch device versus the desktop. In future videos I will go through um, how to use some of these things on a system that doesn't have a touch screen, how you can use the mouse and the keyboard to do some of the similar actions, but today going to focus on basic gestures and a couple of things about how to, how to work with apps and then go into more details as the videos go on. Um, so the device is powered up and what you see here is the start screen um, which is basically showing all the common apps that you, you might use and you can see that we just move between the different ones by scrolling left to right um, and it just it will show every app that you've pinned to the start page and that's what this surface is called. The surface that we're showing right now is the start page. As you'll see, one of the things that's very different about um, Windows 8 and all the other OS's, including older versions of Windows, is that it's not using um, static icons on the, on the start page. It's actually showing what they call tiles. And a lot of these are set up very nicely to show context information that's re relevant to the app. So you can see up here, have my email, and it's showing that I have one unread email and a little bit of information. My calendar, which is showing some information, the current weather where I'm at, the current news, um, I follow stocks and so some basic stock information. Um, and this is one of the features that I like the most um, right at the moment is that just having this quick view into these apps um, is fantastic and it makes it really quick to, to get the information that you need without having to open apps, go between pages, all that kind of stuff. Um, so now let's go a little bit um, deeper into it. Um, so like I said, see the different apps that are pinned to the start? You just scroll left to the right. Um, but there actually are quite a few other apps that are on the system. And to be able to see those applications, you want to access the context menu. And you do that by um, pulling your finger up from the bottom of the screen. Now this context menu will change with each app that you go to. So this was on the, the main start page that shows that menu. But if I, for example, go to Maps, and then pull it up there, you'll see that there's different options for the map application. So we'll come back to maps in a moment, but let's go back to the start screen. Go to the context menu on this one, and you'll see that the option there is all apps. So if you click on that button, you'll see it lists a whole bunch of other stuff that isn't shown on the start menu. Um, so if you want to, for example, add, um, let's say, paint to the start menu, what you would do is you would select it, and you do that by um, clicking on it and then dragging it down. Um, basically, you want to drag it just a little bit in the opposite direction of scrolling. So on this window, you're scrolling back and forth like that. To select something, you just grab it. Oop, and then I started it. Um, go back to All Apps, Paint. And so you just drag it down a little bit. And then you'll see there's a check mark, and then it also gives you the menu. And so what we want to select here is pin to start, which is on the side. And now if we go back to the start menu, you'll see that way over here on the left, we've now added paint. And so we can go and do the same thing with, with other apps. Um, so let's go and add, for example, um, maybe Notepad. Pin that to start, and then let's say command prompt. Pin that to start as well. So if we go back to the start page now, you'll see that I now have paint, notepad, and command prompt. As you add more and more apps to your start screen, it could be a little tough to sort of find things. And they've provided a couple of different methods for um, making that easier. One of them is, is that you can see your apps are in groups. And in the next video, I'll show you how to manage those groups. But for now, one thing that's useful to know is if you do the pinch action, so bring your fingers together on the screen, you'll see what it does is it zooms out on your start screen so that you can see a much larger surface area. And then if you can see the group you're looking for, you just 
click on that and it will make sure that that group is focused on the, the screen. Um, so again, you can just go over here, click that one, and make sure that those apps in that group are, are shown there. Um, if you're in that, that um, zoomed out phase and you want to zoom back in, you just do the reverse action to the pinch. Um, they call that the stretch, which is out like that. And then you can see it brings it back to the normal mode. Um, one other um, useful thing to do is if you know an app is on there, you know its name, um, but you're not sure how to find it, you can just start typing um, the, the name of the app and it will do a search. And so I typed in calc and then calculator showed up on the, the side there. You can do the same thing with paint. You can see it brings that one up. So another quick way to access apps. Um, one of the apps I really like to sort of play with and get used to some of the gestures if you're new to a touch screen is the map application. So let's bring that back up again. And again, you can use the, the, the stretch to zoom in and then the pinch to zoom down. You can scroll left and right to take a look at it. And then again, the context menu, pull your finger up from the bottom and you can see there's a whole bunch of um, different options. Um, one I always like to play with is the map style and this is where you can move to the aerial view which gives you the satellite images. Um, right now I have traffic conditions put on the map um, as well so that you can see um, basically everything's looking pretty good traffic wise. You can turn that off if it's getting in the way. So show, oh, I'm sorry, no, it isn't on. Now it is on. Um, you can see there that the, it looks like the, I think that's the Lincoln Tunnel um, is a little bit backed up at the moment for some reason. But let's go and turn that back off again. And you can see you can zoom into particular areas. And so this is something's always fun to do if you want to go and take a look at a, at a neighborhood. And it sort of really shows off the, the display that's available. Um, on, on the Surface device. It's sort of a really nice feature um, with the touch screen. So now let's go back to the start page. I'm going to try to keep these videos down um, into the five to ten minute range just because I think it's a little bit easier um, to, to consume that level of detail. Um, so the only other thing that I was going to cover in this video is shown how you launch apps. You just select one. I'm showing you the context menu. Um, but what if you want to close an app? Um, the first thing I want to say on that is that in, in most cases it's not really necessary to close the apps. Um, Microsoft sort of went out of their way to make sure that apps that aren't on the forefront are um, basically put to sleep, the process is suspended. So it's not using CPU and it's using a minimal amount of memory. But if you do want to close an app, um, there's a couple different ways to do it. So the first one is if you have the app open, what you're going to do is you're going to drag your finger down from the top and then right down to the bottom and then that will close that app. And so again, let's say that if we're going to open up maps again, wait for it to start up. You just, from the top, oh, top, drag it down to the bottom. Now, what if you want to close a bunch of apps and not necessarily the ones that you have open or you want to see what's open? Well, with the touch screen, you bring your finger from the, the side and you bring it back over and this will show all the applications that you have open. If you simply swipe your finger across like this, it's actually going to take you to the last app that you open and you can do that multiple times to sort of cycle through the other ones that you have open. Um, but, and so at that point you can, let's say I want to close the browser, then you can just swipe that down, we'll go back there, you can swipe, go to the next one, close that one down. Um, but if you don't want to have to switch to the app to close it, the other option is, again, you swipe it out, then back, it shows the list, and then you can take the app, drag it out, and then drag it down. Um, oh, didn't work that time. Let's try it again. So, I'll close this one. Um, and then can, if you didn't see it that time, let's do it again with this one. And so that's a way to close apps even more quickly without having to open them up. And I can shut down the weather as well. So as I said, just a quick introduction. Um, in, the fall, in the next couple of videos, I'm going to be talking about the browser, um, some of the other applications that are on there, and then also get into configuration. Um, so hopefully this helps. And um, stay tuned for the next one.